Hey, this is Rick Casselge from ExercisesForInjuries.com. Today I have another interview for you, and it's with Colleen, and I'll get Colleen to introduce herself uh, and ex uh, explain who she is, and then we'll get into the interview. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me on today, Rick. I'm excited to be here. So my name is Colleen Riddle. I am an exercise specialist. I'm actually certified in pre- and postnatal exercise uh, fitness and health, and I'm also an ACE certified personal trainer. So I love helping people get fit in all ways, but especially helping women before, during, and after their pregnancy. Awesome. Awesome. And that's what we're going to talk about. In this interview, we're going to kind of talk about uh, things that women need to remember when it comes to exercising when uh, pregnant. So let's kind of start off with like, what are some of the common mistakes that you know, women that are pregnant make when it comes to exercising. Yeah, that's, you know, I think the biggest mistake is that they don't exercise. You know, so many times I think they're afraid of what to do, what's safe, what's not safe, and so then they just don't exercise. And that can cause a lot of health issues on the mom and on the baby. So I would say that's the number one mistake is that they just don't know what to do and so they don't exercise. Okay, and... A common thing that I, I hear is, so let's say someone, you know, they're not super active, you know, they become pregnant, and then all of a sudden that inspiration to become, to exercise is, so they want to go from like zero to a hundred right. in their exercise program. And what are some common mistakes that those type of uh, women make when it comes to, they haven't been really active, but now they have that inspiration to uh, be active. Yeah, so first I tell them, awesome, way to be inspired, but let's take it slow. You know, you've got to go slow and get your body, you're carrying another human being now, and just slowly get into it. You know, start with just walking um, and build up your stamina, because in the first trimester, a lot of times people are so tired, um, it's, it's hard to even get motivated. So I would encourage those people to, yes, you're doing the right thing, but get some guidance and take it easy and build up. Um, you know, and for example, like on the opposite side, people who are already really fit for their first trimester, they can pretty much do everything that they've been doing. You know, if they've been running, they can continue to run and things like that. But someone who hasn't been exercising, we just need to be a little bit slower uh, and a little bit more progressive. Okay. And then what are the, kind of the types of exercise forms that you end up recommending when it comes to someone uh, that's, that's pregnant and wants to kind of exercise? Yeah, well, there's so many different things, you know, that they can do. Um, I love to focus on strength training uh, and cardio, but strength training is so important throughout their pregnancy because, you know, everything's pulling them forward. Their belly's getting bigger. It's pulling them forward. Their breasts are getting bigger, pulling forward, and really work on the strength training exercise for their upper back, um, shoulders, core especially, you know, getting that core, especially, um, that's why before uh, they get pregnant is so important. But in their first trimester, to really work on strengthening that core because that's going to help alleviate back problems. So, again, strength training is so important because they're going to get tired carrying. I mean, you, you know, it gets heavy. And so I work, like to work on strength training and then specific areas, like I mentioned, with, you know, um, the, the pelvic floor and the core and the back to alleviate some of those problems as they go throughout their pregnancy. Awesome. And so you've mentioned it a couple times. So a common thing or a common way uh, that people kind of justify eating more or letting their mm -hmm. eating habits uh, drop is they say, hey, now I'm eating for two. Now, what, what, are your, what are common mistakes that people make when they start saying that, hey, I can eat more or I can, you know, go crazy with the eating because now I have to eat for two? Right. God, that's such a great question because that is something that I really work with my clients about um, not having that attitude. You actually only need 300 to 350 calories more a day when you're pregnant. And we want those calories to be very nutrient dense because think about it. Your baby is getting literally everything that goes into your body. And when people take that attitude of, oh, well, I can eat for two, unfortunately, they're not eating uh, two helpings of apples and broccoli and things like that. You know, they're like, oh, I'm going to down this hot fudge sundae. Um, and that can lead to, you know, gestational diabetes and 
overweight. And so it's so important for people to really monitor their weight. Obviously, I'm not talking about dieting. We want to make sure that you're getting good nutrients and enough nutrition in you. But it's not, you know, a green light to be able to eat whatever you want. Because first of all, again, like I said, it's all going to the baby. So we want to give great high nutrition uh, food for the baby. But then, you know, think about it. Well, after the baby comes, you've got all that extra weight to lose. So that's something else to think about. You know, you're putting it in and you're going to have to take it off um, afterwards. So it's real important to, to think on a healthy wise, not giving it that green light to go crazy. Yeah. yeah. And then you mentioned something like nutritional dense foods. Maybe mm -hmm. kind of expand on that and kind of why it's yeah. important for uh, the, the pregnant uh, woman. Yeah, absolutely. So when I say nutrient dense food, it means like whole foods. So, you know, like I always tell my clients, stay away from those 100 calorie pack things that are out there because it's just processed junk and it literally has no nutritional value where you can have, you know, 100 calories of broccoli or almonds or something that's very nutrient dense that's going to sustain you. Um, so does that make sense of the yeah. difference between nutrient yeah. dense and, and junk? And that goes for even people who aren't pregnant. I spend a lot of time educating my clients on you know how to read a label and really know what you're putting in your body um, because there's so many scary things going on out there. You know, now with genetically modified foods and all of that. So we want to really be careful of what we're putting in our bodies. Okay. And then so then kind of continue on with that thread. Like what are some snacks that you would recommend for yeah. uh, someone that's pregnant that instead of reaching for you know the bag of potato chips what mm -hmm. are some other nutritionally dense foods that they can kind of grab uh, that they can grab in order yeah. to help them and one of the things that they really want to make sure you're getting a lot of is protein you need a lot of protein um, throughout your pregnancy and so you know go-to items could be like um, a good low-fat Greek yogurt um, and always, you know, a side note to yogurt, always make sure you're getting the plain version because otherwise it has a lot of added sugar in there. Um, it can be crazy. There can be up to like 27 grams. I looked at a yogurt the other day when I was uh, shopping. I was taking a client to the grocery store and, you know, I was looking to, to show her, look at the difference here. You know, you've got yeah. seven grams yeah. here versus 27 yeah. grams of added sugar. Yeah. Um, so Greek yogurt is a good one and you can put, you know, fresh fruit in there. Um, an apple and like a nut butter, like organic peanut butter or almond butter, something like that. And a lot of times that will satisfy some sweet tooth because it's really satisfying. Um, so those are easy ones, you know, hummus and, and vegetables, that's an easy grab. Um, anything like that that can be easy and especially like the vegetables are so good because they're crunchy and it kind of gives you that satisfaction. Um, and you know, if you have a craving for chocolate, I always say get the real deal, like get that dark chocolate and, you know, just modify it, have one little piece of the bar a day. And that's, at least it's, you know, real dark chocolate, uh, which has some good antioxidants for you. Um, good. All awesome tips.